Hi, I'm Patrick with Digitized Designs. and Today we're going to be looking at the SimScan E, the latest hardware offering from ScanTech. Uh, we just got it in a couple days ago. We're really excited to get out of the box and get scanning with it. And we'll uh, show you guys a little bit as we're doing it. Um, so this is it. It is the latest in the SimScan line. Uh, the previous model was the SimScan 42. 42 meaning 42 laser lines in its laser crosses laser pattern. This one's got 63 in that same pattern. Um, and so that means it's got a scanning speed of 6.3 million points per second. And uh, more importantly, probably, is it's completely wireless. So it's got a wireless adapter, uh, kind of looks like a drill battery, plugs on the bottom. Uh, that's how we'll be, we'll be using it today. You can also plug it up and use it wired, just like the original SimScan if you want. Uh, but yeah, that makes it really nice. That battery uh, wireless adapter has a battery in it, uh, actually two batteries. You can hot swap them, and then uh, it streams all your data over Wi-Fi to... Uh, your scanning software so you're free of that tether uh, of that cable. So without further ado let's get into the case here and take a look at what we've got and get it hooked up. Uh, so some things in here look familiar. Uh, so this scanner is right here. Um, I know it's got a little bit, uh, a couple of minor differences. We've got these little thumb and finger moldings here on the device. Um, the plugs on the bottom are still the same power in USB. We've got this extra adapter here for the uh, wireless adapter. And uh, it's cables, USB, and power supply. So just in case you wanted to hook it up and run it wired. Um, and then there's the wireless adapter. And then underneath all this foam here, we've got our uh, calibration certificate and calibration board all inside of here. So I'll pull this out. Here's our wireless adapter. This kind of goes on just like a like a power tool battery almost. Just clicks into place. Got a little battery door, two different rechargeable batteries, so you can change one at a time, keep everything powered up while you're switching batteries. Power button right here, so we can hold that down and power this up. If you're not familiar with handheld scanners, uh, kind of the business end of it is right here. You got these two big cameras surrounded by little LED rings. You got these laser emitters here on the front fundamental way the technology works. Those cameras are watching for those targets that I've got on or around my part. As long as it can see four of those, uh, it's able to place where the scanner is in 3D space. And then these laser emitters cast that laser pattern, in this case that 63 laser pattern, onto the, the object. And as those lasers spin into form, it's able to make measurements, collect points along those lines that it streams over into your scanning software. And then that's where you get your point cloud that eventually becomes your mesh. Uh, so let me set this down. Get this set off the table, and we'll bring over this part. So you might notice if you've seen a similar like handheld scanner setups before, you typically you've only got these little uncoated targets, the, the little dots by themselves. I've also got a single coated target on here. This is the square one. Uh, this is going to do something cool uh, once we start scanning. Uh, so the software we're using today is DefineSight. Again, another new offering from ScanTech. This is their newest software. Uh, so it's going to be where we would used to use Scan Viewer to collect our data and merge multiple scans together and export our mesh. Um, they've done a lot of really cool streamlining of workflows. Um, most applicable uh, to this are the, the things that you can do from the scanner that you used to have to do inside of uh, the software. Um, so you'll notice there's a lot more just tap a button on the scanner to make something happen instead of clicking in the, in the software. And I'll show you kind of what that means here. Uh, but this coded target is going to let me automatically set up a background plane, avoiding more clicking and just letting me scan a little bit more efficiently. So everything's set up, my scanner's connected, my resolution and exposure are good. I'm going to just click the button on the back of the scanner here, the start button. And as soon as the software and the scanner are ready, those LED rings light up and I start picking up targets. You'll notice that big coded target shows up as a green square. That at the end of this process is going to automatically set up that background plane. Again, something you could do in previous versions in Scan Viewer, uh, but it took highlighting these, saying, here's these targets, this is where I want my plane. That's going to prevent the collection of data at or below that plane. In this case, keep me from scanning the table, the turntable or the table, and just this part that I want. So I long press that M button. Uh, this is another thing you can do from the scanner you used to have to click around for. It's going to stop everything. Uh, stop my target scan, automatically set up my background plane, and as soon as it's ready for me to start laser scanning, it's going to 
let me know. I can just hit the start button and start right up. You can see how dense that laser pattern really is with those 63 lasers. I really kind of just got to point this in the right direction of the part and it starts to light it up. Kind of like spray painting with data, it feels like. So anywhere you can see that you might want to fill in, you point the lasers at it, it'll start to fill in. It takes a little care to get some like nooks and crannies a little bit more deeply. But really quickly you've got a scan of this part from this side. As soon as we're done, I'll long press M again. It's going to take care of all my usual cleanup steps, including some extras we couldn't do before. So I'll long press that M. It's going to do some noise filtering, which it always did. This time it's going to automatically run that background plane and uh, disconnecting components, getting rid of some of that stuff you saw floating around in the air, just like reflection, reflective noise, something that's typical of laser scanners. And then I've got my part scanned and ready to go. So typically you want to repeat this a second time for most things, so we're going to add a new scan. Give me a clean slate, but keeping that old data on deck. And flip my part over, and we'll start up by clicking that start button. Get some target scan ready. Really quickly grab all these targets and that coded target. As soon as I've got those all captured the way I want them, long press M setting up that background plane and getting my laser scan ready where I can grab it, zoom in a little bit, and as soon as I've got everything I missed from that first scan, we can hit stop and then combine these two together. Long press in, stop, and notice I got all that noise disappearing. It's huge. I used to have to you know, lasso that stuff and delete it. Uh, same thing with the table if you didn't do a background plane, but that all gets taken care of automatically now. It's really cool. Uh, so now I've got these two scans. As you can see, they're not aligned, but I've got a couple of targets on my part. In this case, that's actually the only reason I have those targets on the part. The ones on the table are more than enough to use for scanning. But this enables a really quick alignment between those two scans. So a marker splice, we'll go into that command. That's going to allow me to pick my two scans I want to align between. And this is their, how they're currently aligned. This top one I don't have to do anything to. This one I just lasso all the targets I have that are on that part. And then if we hit apply, you should see these two over here snap together. Perfect. Gives me an accuracy readout of that alignment and then I can hit merge and it's gonna make me a third scan that's got both of those data sets merged together. It's actually even gonna mesh it too and uh, give me that STL. So right now we're looking at a point cloud, individual points uh, dotting the part um, and then this actually connects the dots between all those points and makes that polygonal mesh that we can then use in our inspection software say, compare it to a CAD model we already have or something like our reverse engineering software, something like DesignX where we can create a CAD model from it that we don't already have. So yeah, we can just uh, save that off as an STL. Uh, it's ready to use down the line. This has been an overview of the SimScan E. If you've got any questions about it, you'd like any more information, please let us know. Visit our website, digitizeddesigns.com. Shoot us an email, uh, info at digitizeddesigns.com, or just give us a call, and we'd be happy to talk to you and happy to answer those questions.